I'm Nick Powell, reporter with City and State. Here joining me is the president of SEIU 32BJ, Hector Figueroa. Thanks for joining us for this interview. Um, my first question is, there are rumors that perhaps your membership were leaning more towards Bill de Blasio in terms of making this endorsement, and the executive board was leaning more towards uh, Christine Quinn. I was just wondering if there's any truth to those, to those rumors. Well, those rumors are not true. The board members are rank and file members like the rest of the members of 32BJ. They represent all the different sectors of 32BJ. We did poll our members professionally, like most unions do, and we found through that polling that the candidate had the most uh, support uh, or that members were more inclined to support at the time of election has been Chris Quinn. Uh, we also do a number of polls informally during meetings of the staff, during meetings of member leaders, and you know some of those resulted in sometimes uh, Chris Quinn or Billy Blasio or some other candidate coming ahead. But that depended on the moment of the last six months of where members were at. I feel very confident that the endorsement of the union reflects where our members are at, the majority of the members. We still need to talk to the 75,000 members of 32BJ in the city so they are aware of our endorsement and we feel very confident that they will understand the value of the recommendation by the board and they will stand together with us, volunteer, cast their vote uh, you know, in favor of uh, Chris Quinn, the Speaker of New York City. Now, I had heard that, uh, obviously, labor has gone in a number of different directions with the mayoral mm -hmm. candidates. UFT went for Thompson, 32BJ yeah. obviously went for Quinn, um, 1199 went for de Blasio. Um, I had heard that there, initially, before these endorsements were made, were discussions between 32BJ and 1199 about endorsing uh, the same candidate. I was wondering if there was any, any truth to yeah, that. Yeah, during every election, the unions talked to, you know, about the possibility of maybe endorsing the same candidate. We uh, exchanged information, like business business companies do too, about you know, the different positions of the candidates on various issues. Uh, the fact that we could not agree on the same candidate is not because labor is divided and we cannot come together. It's because these candidates are very, very similar when it comes down to what animates them, what drives them, what kind of issues they care about. And the only differences that you find among these candidates are based on who do you judge, in your opinion, is better fit to be in the office, to run as a leader, right? To be the mayor. And in the opinion of some unions and some leaders, some candidates may have some qualities that appeal more to their base. If they're public sector unions, if they have contracts with the mayor, that may inform how they uh, decide. So to me, it's not a sign of weakness. It's simply a sign that you have largely labor, pro-labor, progressive running in democratic primaries, and it makes it very difficult uh, for the unions to agree on one individual candidate. And obviously, uh, your membership is as a large uh, Latino, you know, representation. Um, Quinn has been, you know, reportedly targeting the Latino vote um, in hopes of, of winning the election. I, I was cur curious what your, your membership can offer in terms of a, a ground operation perspective um, and what you plan to do to help uh, Quinn win in, uh, in September and then in November. Mm -hmm. But we have spent 13 years in this union building the leadership of our members in the workplace and in their communities. We work very closely with immigration advocates, uh, with uh, you know, faith uh, organizations, um, you know, with other unions. So our members are tested on being leaders uh, in the community and the workplace. Within the Latino community, I don't see any other union in the city has done more uh, in advocating for immigrant workers, for domestic workers, for low wage workers and 32BJ has. So what we hope is that by making this endorsement, the message within those communities will be that the union that has stood with them on many of the issues that affect uh, you know, them as members of a community uh, is endorsing a candidate and that they will use that information in making a judgment of how they want to vote. Nobody can guarantee that any community, any sector will vote the way that you are suggesting. But we felt that there was a piece of information missing out there in the primaries up to this point, and that is that uh, you know, uh, Chris Quinn has been a consistent voice and a strong advocate for low wage workers and immigrant workers. And we're hoping that with our endorsement, that information, that message will finally be heard in the primaries and that voters who value that, uh, you know, uh, uh, determination, that judgment, recommendation from the union uh, will respond positively and help elect her to be the next mayor. 
but that is up to the voters, not to us. Sure. And do you plan on uh, doing an independent expenditure in this race? We're considering doing independent spending, but uh, we are a very member-based organization. Uh, I know that our members want the resources of this union to be spent in building our union. So the way that we carry our independent spending is in providing opportunities for our members to volunteer, not on paid time, but on their own time, to knock at doors, talk to other members, talk to voters. That's how we seek to do independent spending, to support our members in their effort to participate uh, in the democratic process. Sure. And uh, my last question is, uh, obviously, uh, in 2009, your union went a different way under different leadership. Mm -hmm. um, I was just curious if you had any sort of discussion with, uh, with Mike Fishman about um, endorse, you know, making an endorsement this time around, any advice that he gave or any sort of consultation at all? We, we talked to all of our leaders nationally about what's happening in New York. We represent uh, 125,000 members of the 2.2 million members of ACIU. So you can imagine that we're talking to every local around the country sure. and every local leader, as well as international leaders like Mike and President Mary Kay Henry, are curious and interested in what we're doing in the city. Uh, but the decision ultimately is made by the elected board members of 32BJ, uh, whom you saw, they're rank and file members. They're very engaged uh, in their union, in their community. They follow politics in a way that uh, you know, uh, is incredibly satisfying to you know uh, a president like me to know that my board members understand what is at stake. They engage very uh, you know uh, intensely in the discussions, and at the end of the day, that's how we make a decision. Right. Uh, you know, but we talk to all the leaders in our union, all the leaders in the community to hear and listen to their views, and it's through that process that we feel compelled to endorse at this time. Uh, we feel that what is at stake in this election is way too big for New Yorkers. And we encourage all New Yorkers to come and vote. They should come and vote in these democratic primaries. They should not sit it out. Five candidates may appear like a long menu of choices, and what we're offering now is to say, we believe that one of them stands above the rest, uh, and we hope that that will encourage many more to come to the polls and cast a vote. Hector Figueroa with 32BJSEIU, uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you, appreciate it.